It's one year since Rob Bredel's near-fatal tug-of-war with the crocodile named Tripod. The Bushman has been in and out of hospital under the care of Brisbane orthopaedic surgeon, Dr. Paul McInerney. Morning, Rob. How are you going? Oh, not too bad. <laughs> so, she's nearly as sore as it was when it happened. <laughs> Don't know what you did to me. Rebuilding Rob's hand has been a medical triumph. The croc roll dislocated every bone in his wrist. There's still a little bit of work to be done in terms of fixing some fractures there. Uh, but he had a very, very unstable wrist. He underwent 12 surgeries with infection a constant danger. If the croc doesn't get you, the bugs will. He needed a lot of washouts to get ahead of the infection. Uh, he grew a lot of unusual organisms in his wrist. And now, these come with the crocodile's mouth, do they? They come with the crocodile's mouth and uh, the fresh water and the farm environment that uh, the injury occurred in. Did you give him any life advice after that? Uh, he should probably avoid sitting on his crocodiles, but I don't think that's going to change. Yeah, I'm just bloody glad to have the bloody hand, I can tell you, mate. I reckon you've done a bloody good job here. And when I go fishing, I hope you can come up to my place and I'll cook you a feed of fish. Nice. <laughs> Rob runs Breddle's Wild Farm with his sister-in-law Cherie and nephew Daniel. His family know crocodiles just as well as Rob does, and they know the rules, so Dan and Cherie are hard markers when it comes to what happened that day. Who's to blame, him or the crocodile? Him. him. <laughs> they chorused. <laughs> you know, no doubt about answering that. There's rules they've got to follow. And if the boys had done that, he would have said to the boys, hey, don't do that, you'll get bitten. And I went to Rob and I said, what the heck have you done? And that's all I said. That's family talking. And in terms of the family business, is this <laughs> uh, good publicity or bad? Oh, we got busier after it. <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> the truth? Yeah, we did get, everyone was curious, but it's just an accident, you know. Were you pretty shocked? Yeah. It shocked me more than what I thought it would. You've got a 15 foot croc, you know, now oh I, can actually do it. I can actually move it up and down and you know, I can get a little bit of that, because it's all smashed in here, right? Was, that was gone down to there, that was all hanging on there, that was all that was hanging on. After all Rob has been through, there's one more thing to do today. Getting back on the croc. The time has come. I would be enjoying this more, Rob, if I didn't know what you're about to do. Right. That you're getting back on the crocodile, as it yep. were. You fall off, you get back. Get back, that's right. Let's go and get this thing yeah, over. Yeah, let's get it over and done. <laughs> Come on, yes. Come on, yes. The croc's Come name on. is Brian. Doesn't sound too fearsome, but this time I'm staying in the truck. Come on. Come on, up you come. You come say, say hello to Charlie, eh? Oh, yeah, don't, don't come worry. On, up you come. Come on, you can have it now, come on. For the barefoot bushman, getting back in the saddle is done with such ease, it's almost an anti-climax. Thank goodness. And I can jump on here, this is a safe spot. How do you know that's a safe spot? Oh, you don't want to know that story, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> when they get about 12 foot long, they can't get their back leg anymore. So I learnt from that, you can, it's a safe spot with a big croc. That's a fairly small brain, doesn't it? I can get away with what I do with these creatures because they are so instinctive, as if they're almost totally predictable. Hardwired. Yes, very much so. Now, I'll get him to wave ta-da to you, watch. Wave ta-da to the nice man. Come on, yeah, wave ta-da, go on. <laughs> so I can teach crocs, wave ta-da. <laughs> He's got a ticklish spot here. So you can say, tickle him and oh, let him go. Jeez. Don't do come that. Come on, round you come, come on. But as you can see where I'm sitting there, he cannot reach me. Really? So I'm quite safe. As long as you don't fall off into his head, you know. And they don't use their tail as a weapon. It's not Ooh. used as a weapon at all. Strictly used for swimming. The simple trick, apparently, to wildlife showmanship is to scare the punters without scaring yourself. So, Rob, am I right to conclude that you're getting back on the crocodile again today? It's not as dangerous as it actually looks. No, it's not as dangerous as it looks. I've fed hundreds of thousands and done literally thousands of shows just like this one here. And I got this, but like I said, I had brain fart that day. 
were you proud of him today when he went back? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's good. Mm. Yeah, it's really good. I knew he'd be all right because the boys were there and I knew if he went too close or did something wrong, they would say, hey, move back, do this, you know? I mean, you can see he's at hand, he's ha having a little bit of trouble holding the stick and all that type, which would take time, you know? It's only very early days with that hand. So it's a, the, the state of what it was in to what it is now, it's, it's modern awesome. hospitals, eh? I reckon five, ten years ago, it would have been a hook. <laughs> then we would have had to rename the croc TikTok. <laughs> it's called a Brettles python. Is it named after the family? I spent an amazing day in the Barefoot Bushman's wildlife paradise with a man who loves to show off nature and at the same time knows it intimately and practically. From the birds of the air to tiny creatures cloaked in invisibility. He even speared lunch with his repaired hand. Oh, that's good. Well done. I'll have the big one. Day with the Barefoot Bushman is a day of eye-opening animal encounters, both delightful... Whoa, Jesus! ..and frightening. <laughs> Sorry about all that. <laughs> So, despite my apprehension, I think you actually enjoyed it. Oh, I always enjoyed playing with crocodiles. <laughs> I wonder, would you have been tasty as far as he was concerned? I don't think I am. I've been spat out that many times. Sorry, it tastes like crap, you know. <laughs> You're indestructible. No, not really. Well, what, what will get you in the end? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Old age, hopefully. <laughs>